So welcome everyone to the monthly review meeting for Hydra, it's March, and we are here in the workshop, so the team welcomes you, and um, hopefully we have many people attending. I don't see the attendance list right now here, because I, uh, I guess you guys have maybe some seals going on. If there are some questions or so, you can um, moderate me maybe a bit, and yeah, um, so we don't see people unfortunately here, that's great. Or maybe I can, no, I, I'm not changing it now. It's okay. Mm -hmm. okay, good. So let's get started. So today we kind of have um, the usual things, uh, demo, but demo first, and then go through a roadmap a bit and see what's going on, what we deliver, what we're delivering next. Um, talk about mainnet, and uh, especially we'll also talk a bit about more of the private payments project. Oh yeah, that's actually many people coming. <laughs> And yeah, so Colin will talk about the payment project. And now let's start with a demo. It's high draw again. Uh, for people who don't know, it's a, it's a drawing pixel painting application. Oh, that's very helpful. Thank you. For that. And um, but this time we'll be doing this on mainnet. So I have brought here high draw with me. I should see my screen. Yeah. And we can paint. Pixels here. This is a hydro head open. We opened it today. So we had opened the first head of three parties today on the mainnet. And um, yeah, I painted this after. So this should be going, catching up in a bit. So kind of, yeah, if you would go to this URL, hydroencoding.at, you can get started painting pixels on mainnet, on Hydra, basically, the same way we used to be doing in. Yeah, before on testnet and so on. So this means we are compatible with mainnet and we can actually start thinking now building applications on mainnet. So I think it's actually about one year since we did the, uh, remember last year maybe Charles, when we did draw first time at this application, but on testnet, and now we're drawing on mainnet. It's applications unchanged by the way. <laughs> Just the hyper node underneath is actually different now. Yeah, yeah, just two hard forks later. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, so that's basically our demo today. Not much to show, <laughs> only a bit on main. And I think you can get started here a bit, just if you want to get going, draw draw what you want. Uh, you will be using all the same Hydra nodes, so there's some congestion still, right? But you see that every click pixel is like confirmed in a second or so and i think that is also the experience we can we can provide on the layer two going forward awesome so have fun painting i'll go back to the slides yeah so hydro mainnet is first agenda item second is we want to talk a bit about the roadmap um so what you see here is like our our one few of our GitHub roadmap features and mark level features, so features which are hopefully understood to our users and developers building on Hydra. You see some things change and it's still quite busy. Um, we also did go through all of this and mark many things as an idea. So going back from a feature to an idea and um, we will be crossing these out in a bit. Um, one thing before we come back to Roman, what we did uh, in the last month was we did a release. So version 09 is what we released. Um, this Hydra node is um, paired with the documentation, of, like with a specification. Um, so you would have the full behavior specified in the, in the LaTeX uh, document, which is linked from the website, but not included yet. This is the uh, next step. But uh, we also released uh, that version has a quite substantial so it's quite decreased costs for opening and closing head by roughly 30 percent uh, we still have the similar limitation of like fine parties but uh, we hope to kind of really drill this down further as we need it for use cases um, one difference big one is that we do contestation deadline differently now uh, it's now constant and does work with any number of parties um, it's easier to configure and we have several small ux features uh, delivered in this version as well uh, link from the slides, which I also share with, uh, with the, in the communication channels after. Um, 
that are full release notes and the GitHub milestone helps in kind of understanding, okay, what is in this release? Um, but after the releases, before the release, right? So now we removed all these ideas quickly from the roadmap and I, I can tell in a bit why, but here we see on the left hand side, um, after 09, of course, comes 010, right? And not always 1.0, we'll be talking about this as well. Uh, but yeah, uh, a very important thing what we've been working on right now is the mainnet compatibility to make sure the hyper node can run on mainnet. Um, the, what I just said, opening up the specification, making it more easier to review and, and uh, suggest changes uh, is basically by incorporating it to the website as um, also we're working on. And we, uh, the, the arrow indicates that we actually moved something a quick win, I would say, something helpful. Users have been requesting for configuring the API a bit forward. Uh, this is also what we expect to be releasing soon in 0.10. Um, so we moved a bit like maybe more to 0.11, but we like committing from external wallets, but that's also a very important feature, uh, which is also requested from the payments use case. Um, yeah, so where did all the ideas go? Um, I'm skipping over this quickly. Um, we basically, by working on mainnet compatibility, we are kind of uh, saying, yeah, okay, we want to focus first on the must-haves, right? So this is the mainnet compatibility is, of course, right, we need to have the technical feasibility or the possibility to do it. And uh, this is what we've been doing right now. Um, we made sure that the Hyronode can talk to Garnode on mainnet, use mainnet addresses and so on document how to do it, uh, add some safeguards. Uh, to not just shoot yourself in the foot too drastically right away. Um, and this is what we've been focusing on. Now, the question will come, uh, are we done now, right? So kind of we reach, we launch, or what, what does it mean, right? Or, or when is it, right, ready? When is it ready this is a big question, right? And I would, I would, we would like to say that Hydra itself is compatible and ready for mainnet now, right? We saw it just now, it's open on mainnet. Now the question is, are you, are, is the use case ready for, for that, right? And this is actually why we also would call it 09, 010, or 011 to also indicate that, yeah, we are, we are here to kind of accommodate features requested by a use case. Um, we, we are here to kind of listen, okay, you need this feature, we need this before we can actually use um, micropayments or wanna, uh, before we can actually do auctions on Hydra on on mainnet and this is this is to indicate that further and uh, of course um, when we are having one of these use cases like mature enough also to really work on hydra on mainnet and this is actually used by people then of course we also be that stable and maintained basis uh, on on what the use case is relying on this is also what the promise of 1.1 1.00 uh, 1 .00 will be it's the first maintained uh, feature which will be going undergoing deprecation cycles and features are not just lightly removed right and and we would uh help in like keeping and maintaining uh hydra heads and um, that version and now the question is um what is actually needed right to to really be in that position and as this is an open source project we we invited more and more people to this call. We see many people and faces arriving. That's very good, thank you. Um, and for being interested, right? But it's also important that we kind of hear from the builders, from the use cases, what features are actually required. And we have been doing quite of a radical take. Uh, some of the things in our roadmap are were there since a year unchanged, right? We thought, yeah, we always want to do this, but often it is, there's two or three alternative ways to do something about one or the other problem or one or the other like challenge or pitfall. And uh, we often don't know exactly what is the best or most convenient way to do things. So we mark many things as ideas. Uh, if you would go to the, to the GitHub roadmap and we are planning to move them into discussions and really like emphasize more the discussions area, uh, which is also on the GitHub project to, to really uh, exchange ideas and even vote and get interaction of, okay, what is the most needed right now of these features? Uh, from there, we'll pick and kind of plan in more concretely into a roadmap. And this is uh, not only to get more of uh, visibility and also more, have more room for, for feature requests and feature ideas from, from actual users, from actual applications, not only from our own use, but 
everybody's use of Hydra. Um, but it's also easier to, to, to discuss ideas there and, and really want to focus on what we want to build in the very soon future right now on the roadmap. So this is, for example, this is without all the ideal items, right? And before it would look like this, right? So here we also see some marked items as feedback needed. So if you want to really give us feedback and see, okay, if you care about uh, building on Hydra, you might want to check out these things first or the most upvoted ones first to see, okay, is it maybe this what you really need before we kind of plan it out and uh, keep it prioritized. So this prioritization is a big thing what we're doing right now. And uh, yeah, we need your input on this. So if I could summarize, um, Sebastian, yep. what we're saying is please start to use Hydra and the sooner you start to use Hydra and feed in your ideas, the more likely uh, you, your uh, requirements are going to be to be met by the team, right? Is, is that a fair way to summarize what you said? Correct, exactly. So when can you use Hydra? You can use it now, right? And uh, we are ready to implement what you need uh, if you need something slightly different or something slightly more for your use case. And that's exactly the situation we're in right now, exactly. Um, and yeah, some of these next things we currently have uh, up front and in the top of our roadmap is uh, want to improve a bit the visibility of what's going on and create a Hydra Explorer, uh, but also integrate the specification into our website to kind of see that thing also be easier to amend, to put both changes to it, to even review it further. So far, it has been on overleaf where we have like uh, on a tight tighter iterations with uh, researchers and, and, and an internal auditor it was easier to do the exchange there. Um, but now we want to really kind of pair it up more easily with uh, the actual software. And uh, one of the things which kind of prompted a bit this, um, how should we go about it, is this external commits feature. So it's something uh, some, of, some of the attendees might remember if they have been there before or like um, are familiar with the project that uh, we want to make it simpler or easier to commit things into a Hydra head. We have a bit of a workaround also internally. This is also what we'd like to improve on. And often, um, yeah, the current API is just not sufficient to do commit multiple things at the same time or commit scripts into a Hydra head. We want to, of course, um, address this. This is the, actually the next uh, feature item on our, on our agenda. Um, but some of these increased flexibility, right, but also increase the risk that we, for example, cannot abort to head because somebody really tries or can denial of service um, the protocol by saying, okay, I, I really commit such a very big output. Um, and this is, uh, of course, a problem. Uh, we want to really mitigate against this and not not open the door wider to, to um, lock down funds um, or actually not open it at all, right, that door. And there's multiple ways to go about this. You have several ideas, and here's linked some ideas, right, of them. And they go at varying lengths of how, how hard it would be to kind of do it one way or the other. And uh, this is now really like a very interesting trade-off discussion we need to have um, within the core contributor group, but also within our like um, more longer-term collaborators already or any anybody new want to join in, have, have ideas here. Uh, we would like to find out how high we should aim here, right? So because everything we try to, the more substantial changes may take longer. And uh, But on the other hand, we also want to have often releases and so on. So this kind of planning discussion is what we're currently in here. And uh, that's one of the most important upcoming things. Okay, do we have questions so far? Otherwise, I would give the mic over to Colin for the payments uh, section. I see maybe here. Hey, yeah, thanks. Appreciate it. No okay, so, hey, good to see you. Okay, so Hydra for Payments, um, the current state, just to catch people up, is we've got this open source repo called Hydra Pay, um, WebSocket API, some convenience features to just spin up a dev net and manage some Hydra nodes, you know, seed with funds, um, and you can build live documentation, which is a little reference app, from that repo, we've also hosted it. Uh, it works with, with preview as well. Yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> Next. So it, in the inter, like in the meantime, this is just recent spare hours uh, with, with the team. We, we wanted to test 
uh, Hydra pay a bit more uh, just beyond that reference app, which is kind of, again, it's just live documentation. It's like a REPL field that you can work through. So we've got this more of a back office style uh, dashboard to manage a bunch of preceded heads to participants. Uh, and you can just arb arbitrarily send and receive between them. And they're all open heads. So uh, some people on this call have already tried it. Um, anyone can DM me and I'll give you the link and the key and you can, it's DevNet right now, but the finality you're seeing with an open head is real because there are Hydra nodes. Um, and this this work, precisely this code that's running right now, um, works with preview as well, because we, we ran it for a bit. It's just too hard to share with a bunch of people. We would need to scoop up a bunch of testnet, ADA, and such, but yeah, it works with both. Great, so next, uh, extending further, right? It's two things at once. It is the Hydra pay repo. There's some precedent for this, like with the Lightning Network, like async, right? They have like node service. They have Phoenix wallet. Uh, they have this stack, eclair stack, it doesn't matter. But basically we want to extend the tooling that's general purpose and a reference app that will be mainnet and production ready uh, as soon as possible. And so for us, it's going to be payment channels, like a, a lightning wallet style uh, send and receive, but rapidly and, uh, you know, a business can take this sort of thing and entertain the idea of no fees, right? Within reason, they can cover uh, some, some of the L1 fees associated with Hydra as a loss leader. So we're exploring all of that. But uh, so yeah, we're gonna be building Hydra now, it's called for no particular reason, which is fast payment channels from a mobile app. And we're extending Hydra Pay, the open source repo, and the former will be making direct use of the latter. So we're, we'd love to talk to anybody about this as it evolves. We're just getting rolling now. Thank you. Yeah, so it's a very, as a project we're very excited about. So it's um, intended to be a lighthouse project really showcasing how can you leverage payments, uh, make that fit faster and cheaper for using hydro technology under the hood. And uh, this is all going to be open source work, right? So it's really like more than a, a very, very maybe mature already, but uh, very example way of processing payments using hyperpay. Um, so in that sense, um, yeah, we've been having these open source projects uh, in the like, core developments, but also this Lighthouse project going on and continuing. Um, you might have seen that there is a new Hydro Discord category on the IoT technical Discord server. It might even come from there. Um, so that's, uh, that's uh, uh, we're expanding a bit the communication there in that sense. And uh, what was also on the roadmap before is um, a bit of a meta task, right? So we have this technical roadmap right now on the on the GitHub, but we are, we are currently overhauling this to um, or adding adding to this an overhauled area of the website, which is currently showcasing some use cases of Hydra, but we hope to be providing a bit more of an end user focus oriented way to see, okay, what's possible with Hydra? What is like the next steps? The, the steps Colin just outlined for the payment sector or vertical, um, really explaining, okay, what is possible now? What is the next step? What kind of features would be needed on, on the Hydra roadmap to, to really give this a bit more like a, a tangible feeling. Um, we even had some people uh, reach out to us, want to join in the fun, uh, help in documenting or explaining what is possible with Hydra. And we're very looking forward to this collaboration as well. And um, yeah, I think we're now really getting, getting started to spread the word more what is possible with Hydra and now especially and soon on, on mainnet. Um, so this is just some more stats. We have lots of contributors to, or some contributors still from the outside, from the core contributors. We're looking for always for more uh, people who want to join in. If you find any problems in documentation, bug fixes, uh, or instructions uh, can be improved. There we are. <laughs> so join in on the fun. So that's basically all the slides I have uh, for today. Um, or this uh, report recordings I need to still update. Um, yeah, this recording here, uh, and also the, there is an accompanying monthly report uh, on our website. Uh, so it's hyphen.family slash monthly, I believe, or so. Um, and there you would find also a written account of all this. And 
yeah, you can take any questions or feedback or any any things for how to do this in the future. Um, the floor is open. Or you want to what, what is the picture we saw we see now? Oh yeah, okay, we have some love here. Awesome. Hello, Emmanuel. Yeah. Hi, yeah. Uh, Hi. Sebastian. Sorry, I haven't uh, turned on my camera. I'm actually in my kimono right now, making a an omelet. So apologies for that. But um, love the progress, love where Hydra's gotten to. Um, with regards to some contributions, I've been um, just lurking, watching the team progress with Hydra for many months now. Um, I'm, I've been keeping in touch with Sebastian and also Colin, who's been working on Hydra for payments for a very long time now. So that's exciting. Um, I, I, this might sound audacious, but then the matter of the fact is that we are already in our Hydra classic um, stage. Um, because keeping track with Hydra and kind of going down into the into the weeds of mini ledger tech, you realize that this is just the beginning. We are right now working on one use case, but then I'm looking to very soon propose um, in the discussion forums the concept of uh, the extended um, Hydra state, cha state channel project. This is how we extend beyond the regular threshold system we have where people have to like lock in funds and it's kind of a very limited in some capacity into more concepts that are akin to what we've seen in the other ecosystems like rollups so essentially the concept of um and this this really was heavily um confirmed when we got when we got the delegated uh hydra head uh setup or uh, topology setup it, it pretty much like connected the dots for me right there and the entire concept is more like what if we could have a set of uh, a set of a uh, core access spin up their head we have a dedicated inbox where uh what was the name where everyday users can submit their funds to and then we have a proof system to help dispute interactions um in such a way that we're able to build these mini ecosystems um that are based on hydra um i need to write this all down for you entirely but the crux of it all is that hydra is officially becoming a stack and it's good you guys have expressed it in the open source format where you're asking for people to come with contributions, to come in with different use cases. I am looking more towards a generalized use case. Um, I don't know if you follow me on Twitter, I'm Pizza Night on Twitter. And I make these posts around like currently when Hydra Classic, soon we're going to get validity channels, we're going to get optimistic channels, we're going to get meta channels, you know, where we kind of build virtual heads on top of existing heads to utilize yeah. different use cases. Um, so these are like the contributions I'm very excited to start throwing in the discussions uh, channels and uh, we'll see where we can go with that. Yeah, yeah, then you perfectly summarized again, right, that this work here is really just one building block, a starting point. Um, you might see some of these things, uh, you, refer, you were referring to the benefit of others, I guess, to some of the concepts we also outline here on the website already. Um, this is also, yeah, just a work in progress often, right? But there's several ways how you kind of, kind of this hydro head technology can pan out and also the virtual heads, the inter communication and so on. So yeah, uh, very much looking forward to, to have discussions with you and everybody else and see how we can also take this further, right? And yeah, it's really a basic hydro head what we have right now today. Um, but this already is a very powerful tool for many of these like business to business use cases and so on. Whereas a more general one is like, uh, yeah, we should always keep the eyes on the horizon. Uh, thank you. So we have a hand raised from Alexander. Uh, hi, guys. Um, Hello. I have, oh, uh, I have a couple of questions. Um, first one uh, regarding the Hydra Pay, um, uh, uh, probably for Colin. Hi, Colin. Uh, are, are we talking about uh, payment between different ads, users of different ads? No, so again, just aiming small first and then expanding out. The round trip you want is what some people do with Lightning now, which is two uh, ADA holders are on phones and they'd like to send and receive with some regularity. Like I go to the same coffee shop every day. Um, and they want to do it with a probably a long-lived open Hydra head. Okay, so within a single head. Okay, because my yeah. question would be how how would you handle the the offline offline clients and and payments between heads? That's yeah, we get we get a little bit of that. Like if you mess with the live demo, 
one second. Um, yeah, if you mess with the live demo, here you go. You just got to DM me for keys. I got like 100 keys left. But you'll see we have, you can leave N heads open and then turn your computer off and then come back much later to the app. And the state of all your heads is still there. So we're just starting that journey of like properly, you know, queuing and spinning things up and down. Okay. So, so what we're kind of uh, building, so you see here, I'll actually just, see here the blue shape here is kind of what we kind of deploy right now basically to mainnet right the basic protocol version of the hydra the details are not so important but this is kind of a, a very basic form of it and now as emmanuel also said before right there's multiple ways how can these things can be combined and and and, and uh, overcoming some limitations because um in the basic protocol everybody needs to be online and responsive but uh, okay. if you like go offline and you want to send a transaction out and then go offline after right how does this kind of pay out of your know, pan out in payments especially as well and what what Collins' team is working on is basically already like peaking in this yellow area here you can manage hydra hands right so you would okay. have basic things more hosted so it's easier to kind of get hold of a hydra node to operate ahead on um, so you kind of even provide these things as a service. That is what we're doing with Hydra Pay, especially for payment channels. Um, but then you have still like these point-to-point -point connections only, reusing these channels or interconnecting these channels uh, in a way like Lightning does. Um, so we're currently building a single channel only, but kind of interconnecting them is, some researchers would call it like trivial. I wouldn't call it trivial, but it's uh, something which is <laughs> definitely doable, right? And this is what you see the upper area here would be about connecting uh, heads into a star-shaped form or like a full capable network with routing and so on. Um, and uh, especially if you go think about clients becoming offline or like on low power devices, you might even want to think about protocol variations where the balance is not so symmetric, but more asymmetric. So the, the center of a transaction does not need to have so many constraints or like responsibilities, whereas the broker, the server, as more of these responsibilities. This is what, what the, the, the core principle of a hyper tail will be, and this is also something we will explore. That's that's actually very interesting because I was thinking about uh, using hydro like uh, uh, channels, two two way channels uh, with the central uh, like counterparty. Thinking thinking I was thinking actually about in exchange uh, that is sort of centralized but uses multiple two-way channels between client and and the exchange uh and this actually i have the design figured out more or less uh this allows actually to to for clients to be offline and to settle and to settle the channels between each other um but that requires a centralized, uh, centralized um, head. Well, not the head. Yeah. But central. It's more of a hub and spoke architecture, right? So you have like when yeah, central like, hub and spoke. Very... Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. My yeah, question so... is: Is there a development in this area, uh, or is it just like open for for further uh, implementation, or how? Maybe I'm not aware. Maybe it's already. Yeah. Exists, I don't know. I mean, um, multiple people are thinking about it, right? And uh, considering it. Um, but I mean, actively working on it, so it's always like, uh, it's hard to define, right? So we've been like debating and, and looking for like prototypes in these directions, but uh, like really building out a concrete thing is, is I guess we're, there, we're going there more structured than like the hyper pain project of Colin and like uh, into this direction step by step. Uh, but of course, in uh, like, using and leveraging these concepts for the quality of use case and join in the fun and just uh, think about it try to build it right you can actually use the tools and see whether it works out or not and i mean we're not ex experts right so we we would rather say we could barely do payments right because it's somewhat easier to understand but we're more like core protocol experts and we would love to have people more from domains from their business cases join in and we can build this all together these ideas and flesh them out together okay cool. oh and i hi Perry. you were here as well also and uh, we have some questions on the on the channel here but i think you're also answering it forth and back that's great um yeah i mean we don't need to 
I mean, if there are some more questions, we can also take them here right now. We are actually quite good in time. Today is really a Q&A session, maybe. Um, but also, you can also take these questions uh, to Discord, for example. There will be more people there uh, to answer it also. Uh, we can start threads and, and, and have the discussion going. It would be the Ask Hydra channel on the IOG Discord server, mostly, but we're also on some other Discord servers uh, in case you can't find it. So let me just take this question here. Uh, yeah, so Matter Hydra Pay is the only uh, repository to get your hands on right now. And we're also building with the Cardano Foundation uh, the Hydra voting use case. Uh, so there we will kind of explore how we can do tallying of votings uh, uh, using Hydra. Uh, we're also working with uh, MLabs on auction use cases. So it's also so these are three are kind of lighthouse projects. We're kind of using Hydra for one or the other use case, exploring these things and um, uh, from a prototype to a more MVP uh, and then further major in this, these cases out is what we're currently doing. And uh, they're currently uh, distributed a bit. So there's like in the individual organizations, we, we hope to kind of give a better overview soon, especially on this user, user centric roadmap. Um, but yeah, I guess getting started also on the Hydra repository itself is also a way to get started to have a bit more of a more direct way to interact with our heads. Um, there is a demo you can go through and basically this high draw what we saw here is uh, it's not so much of a useful application right now we hope to be a bit more um, exci uh, exciting so you can really draw something we can put that back onto the layer one uh, but that is for example part of the hydra repository itself so it would be in without which ki hydra is the repository there to get started and we have some more links yeah good yeah, I would say time to celebrate. So I'm to celebrate Hydra on mainnet. Um, we will do maybe tonight. Let's see. Uh, these are more uh, more uh, workshopping topics, but uh, yeah, um, glad you were all here. Okay, that's some reactions here. Okay, thank you. And there's any no more questions. I would say. Stay tuned, follow the announcements, uh, the Ask Hydra channels, um, and we'll do this every month at the minimum. Maybe some more emails and some Twitter spaces in between. Let's see. Uh, we need to catch up a bit on the communications. But yeah, thank you everyone for coming. <laughs>